Hello everyone, so I'm glad to see you, but anyway, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm still working, okay, hopefully you can see me, Shirley, good to see you, good to see you, I'm, um, I'm working on the second piece, uh, pretty much, and uh, a little later, once we're gonna have little more people, I'll show you the first one, okay, so, but as of now, I started to do the second corbel of, of uh, the same project, same Venetian style carving. And I kind of already have to get done with that, but we added some more changes, uh, added some more details and so on. It takes a little longer than what I expected. So I'm in the process actually of uh, undercutting. So, but uh, Richard, good to see you. Paul, good morning. Uh, I don't know, is it still morning right there? It's uh, two o'clock right now, right here. So good to see you, Paul. Good to see you, Richard. Let me see whom I missed. Okay. Uh, I am on uh, multiple platforms, uh, on the Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch, on Twitter, on Periscope. And if you're watching me on uh, let's say on um, uh, Facebook, I would highly encourage you to go to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's much, much better. Uh, quality is better. I'm streaming in uh, 1080 uh, on YouTube. And, uh, you know, it, it should be better. Okay, let me know, please, uh, if uh, it sounds okay. I mean, uh, if it's too quiet, if it's too loud, just let me know if uh, everything is working good. Okay, it's also good to see you. Bill, good to see you. Richard, so people, same people, wonderful. <laughs> good to see you, wonderful people. So let me, let me work and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what I'm doing. All right, I'm doing actually deep undercutting. Uh, I had multiple emails from different people actually, members of my school mostly, and uh, some of you asked me uh, how I do my deep undercutting, uh, undercutting or undercarving, whatever you call it. Uh, and I understand, I, I showed that multiple times on my school site, on the School of Wood Carving site, but not all of you watched all of my videos. And I understand that's uh, over 2,000 videos, like 2,500 right now. And that's uh, weekly, I add more and more videos. So it's a lot of videos. Let me see if I'm uh, missing anything. Paul, thank you very much. So sound and video are great. But anyway, so the question is, uh, how do I uh, undercut? Uh, so in areas like this, so you can see it's uh, kind of deep. And that is a second piece, by the way. That is a second uh, piece I'm working on. And I'm not, the second piece I'm not filming for the school. Uh, I already done 100% the first piece and uh, I still, editing those videos and you will see 100% how it's done but I'll play a little bit uh, later a clip uh, uh, from the school actually and I'll show you how it's supposed to look at the, like a final look how it's supposed to look when it's going to be done all right well actually you know what I can uh, I can probably play right now so let me do that let me do that. Uh, Paul is asking, uh, can I, can I, uh, uh, can you link your drawing program uh, for the computer for design? Uh, well, uh, not today, uh, Paul. If you're asking if uh, just to do some drawing uh, today, I probably could, but uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what is the question? Maybe I can just uh, hook uh, my iPad so that I probably still able to do. So let me know what is the question and uh, I'll see if it's uh, worth it or not. Oh, you're talking about uh, what program I'm using. I'm sorry, that is probably uh, my fault, uh, misunderstanding. And I apologize uh, for the sound outside. I do have a landscapers <laughs> working uh, 
<laughs> right outside of my window and sometimes you know they just are coming at a certain time when I don't expect them to come <laughs> so my apologies so let me understand your question Paul can you rephrase your question are you asking about the software I'm using for the designing or are you just asking to draw something in life I mean in live stream I think I understand you just what software I'm using Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, wonderful. Okay, uh, Paul, that is a, a kind of uh, interesting question because I'm using multiple, okay? So I'm not using just uh, one, okay? I'm not using just one. First of all, I use paper, okay? I like paper if it's a small project. And uh, if you watch uh, some of the videos uh, on the school site, I sometimes just to draw right on the <laughs> on a piece of wood okay and I design as I go so that is uh, one of my approaches but let's say uh, for the big project like that uh, I had to use uh, software and uh, I actually used uh, three to be exact uh, well, first of all I did the three-dimensional modeling on a computer and I used two programs for the three-dimensional modeling uh, one of them would be Rhino and I used uh, version 6 Rhinoceros uh, version 6 and the uh, second one would be Blender okay uh, Rhino is paid and it's kind of expensive program uh, I used that for uh, modeling because uh, uh, well I, I, I could use SketchUp but SketchUp has a lot of limitations and uh, I'm not biggest fan of the SketchUp. I know a lot of woodworkers, they like SketchUp. And let me work, actually, and uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to continue talking. Okay. Uh, I used the SketchUp before, uh, but I believe for the complicated uh, curvatures, uh, Rhino is much better. Although it's really buggy. Okay. Rhino is really buggy program. i not biggest fan. Unfortunately, there's no other software. Uh, 3D modeling software can do what Rhino able to. Uh, yeah, you can use uh, probably uh, Fusion 360, uh, but I tried and I don't like it. Okay, so the, the why I like Rhino uh, because it's actually uh, curvature based. Every line is a curve. Okay, and I'm able to do three-dimensional modeling based on the curves okay so that is number one program uh, number two program I export as a 3d object even if it's uh, the whole room uh, to another program uh, blender and uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar or not but the blender is a uh, mesh based it's little different approach to modeling uh, it's uh, it's not based on the uh, curves not based on lines it's based on mesh and blender is actually free it's open source it's a, a free program and uh, you can do some really nice modeling in that uh, there's a lot of a lot of actually uh, professional uh, uh, movies uh, and uh, 3d effects uh, done in blender by the way even news channels they're using uh, uh, like a big news channel so i'm talking about uh, cnn fox news and so on uh, they're using blender but then i took it to key shot a uh, key shot i believe uh, when i did this project it was uh, version 8 uh, version 8 key shot uh, for the rendering okay uh, so that is the uh, three programs and uh, I, I mentioned that was uh, three programs but i actually should probably add one more and one more uh, that would be uh, just uh, uh, my iPad and uh, you can use uh, any pretty much uh, drone programs uh, what I used um, uh, I used couple actually you know but I I really like uh, you know uh, procreate so let, let me show that to you okay so in the procreate 
I'm not sure if we're going to be able to show that here or not. But anyway, so that is my iPad. And uh, when you're doing a Procreate uh, a drawing, you can do pretty much anything with just a pencil. What I did, I took uh, uh, my 3D model, uh, the render, and uh, I, you know, edit details uh, right on the go. So that is uh, what I used. I hope it uh, answers uh, the question. Hope it answers the question. Um, so let me know uh, if uh, anything I should add. Rustam, good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Rustam, good question. <laughs> Вы взяли традицию у хоккеистов, пока не закончите свои изделия, не будете стричься. Uh, so Rustam is asking in Russian language so that I have a, uh, I took tradition from a hockey players, they don't get any haircut until they finish, okay, whatever they, you know, the, the games and so on. Uh, not really, okay, so that is not my the longest hair. So uh, look at my project uh, when I was working on um, <laughs> lion, uh, with the lion head project I had a lot longer Uh, here. So, Rustam, посмотрите со львом, когда я работал. Там у меня мои волосы были намного длиннее. Okay? Но я уже скоро постригусь. Я уже скоро постригусь. Okay. Let me see if uh, any other stuff I missed. Uh, Celso, uh, the question is great. Did you say the piece you are carving now will not be in the school videos. Did you, did I understand right? No, not correct. No. The piece I'm carving right now, that is a second corbel. Okay? So there's a two corbels in this project. Exactly the same. Just one is right and another one's obviously it's left. Okay? So that is the other side. This is a left corbel. The right corbel, I actually filmed completely to the, all of the details, okay? And I'll show you right now, actually, a small video about the first one. But there's no reason uh, to repeat the same videos because it's exactly the same. It's just uh, flipped uh, to the left side. So you did not understand that correctly. You will see the whole process just on uh, one corbel, okay? So, like I said, I just don't want to repeat myself. There's the two walls. I still have to do after corbel, and there's going to be really beautiful uh, uh, designs with the flowers and so on on each side of uh, the room. And I also going to film just the one, and the second one I'll uh, just the carve. Reason why, when I'm filming for school, uh, it takes a long time. I mean, it just uh, uh, really, really, really takes a long time. Uh, you know, just to get all the equipment ready, just to check all the uh, sound and so on. And uh, I'm losing a lot of time. And uh, just because of uh, too many videos, or like I said, that's over 2,500 right now on the school site, uh, schooloffoodcarving.com. And uh, not only I have to film them, I also have to edit them and also have to post them. And I also right now what I'm doing, I'm actually doing uh, captioning. So uh, you can um, uh, read whatever I do. And it also takes time because I'm doing it uh, by hand pretty much. Uh, you know, I do have an accent and uh, automatic captioning doesn't really work 100% for me. And I keep my accent. I kind of like my accent. I don't know. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Let me see what else. Okay, Bill is asking, what tool are you using right now? Are you asking about this one? If you are asking about this tool, that would be number seven, a uh, fishtail and the uh, six millimeters. Okay, so that would be quarter inch. That's what I'm using. Just uh, working upside down. Just working upside down. That is gouge number seven and six millimeters and what i'm doing i'm actually digging that in just like that you know because it's a really deep and i have to just uh, get uh, on inside somehow let me see if i missed uh, some other questions let me see nate 
Thank you very much. Good to see you also. Merry Christmas to you also. Uh, Paul, I really do appreciate that uh, that you share my YouTube videos on the Facebook page. page. Wonderful. Sergio, good to see you. Well, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too. So let me carve. Let me carve a little bit and uh, we'll talk. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Almost forgot. Uh, my apologies. I, I promised I'm going to show you uh, the video when it's done. Okay, the first uh, uh, corbel. So I promised I'm going to show that to you. Let me do that. Here you go. So I've done that piece. Not much left to do. I could take it to extreme. But I don't think I, I want to do that. Yes, I still going to make it more smooth or smoother, I should say. Um, but overall, that is a paint grade. I really don't have to worry about too much and make it super detailed. But still, I believe uh, this piece is a good piece. And, uh, and if you would love to create something like that, you're gonna make me proud uh, yet yeah, that is not common uh, that is not common design i should say it's uh, more i'm gonna repeat that uh, like italian venetian style but i i think it looks really really good so we do have uh, different features on it so we've got uh, like a close drop and we do have some acanthus so and um not normal acanthus, but uh, it's a Venetian style acanthus. We do have some kind of oak, although it's, uh, uh, I don't know if you can say that is uh, oak or not, because uh, when I look at it, when I look at it, so uh, it, it doesn't really look like oak in uh, my understanding, because I used to Russian style or even in the United States, northern style, northern states like in Michigan, in Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, oak. Uh, even if you go to Carolinas, it's still going to be about the same oak. But uh, I had to be authentic. Had to be authentic to uh, Venetian era, Venetian style end of 15th beginning of 16th century and that is how they did it that's why i've done it so now i've got uh, to do the second one and i will fit you know those two pieces on the main body and i still have to do columns i still have i mean i still have a lot of different uh, details to do or parts i should say wood carving parts Anyway, so that is, uh, uh, this piece is actually going to be exactly the same like uh, what I just showed to you. So one of the questions, uh, Jose, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Bill is asking, where do you source your wood? Uh, that is a question uh, comes out really often. Uh, I buy a lots of uh, bass wood, okay? When I'm talking about a lot, it's actually a semi truck uh, comes to my shop and I have to buy bulk a lot. And uh, just because I buy a lot and I spend thousands of dollars, uh, uh, so it's uh, much cheaper. Uh, I, I doubt it's going to answer your question where to get your best wood or whatever the material you want to use, like a walnut or uh, any other carving material like uh, mahogany and so on. Uh, uh, m local lumber yards, uh, I mean, you have to check uh, what other furniture shops or custom woodworkers, uh, what source they use, where they go and uh, shop for the wood, okay? So I, I use, uh, I live in Florida, in South Florida, you know, about three hours from me, uh, there's a lumber yard uh, in Orlando. They usually order for me, 
in bulk, like I said, uh, really good quality basswood. So that's uh, where I get my material. Uh, so other question was, uh, uh, Paul asked, uh, do you use Gonzales tool often on a high relief carvings? I love Gonzales tool. Uh, I always, uh, you know, love knives, not only Gonzales tool uh, per se, but I like, uh, you know, any type of knife. But yes, I mean, Gonzales tool is one of my favorite tools because it's actually a multi-tool and you can get in a really tiny spots with just the edge of this tool, okay? So you can actually do a really nice job with that tool. And let me show you from another uh, angle and you can see I can actually ride right to the edge with my Gonzales tool and make my edge really crisp and nice. Okay, but it's not necessarily the only tool uh, I can use for this operation. Any knife will work actually. And one of my favorite knives, uh, I love uh, number 12 file, uh, Swiss made. It's exactly the same uh, idea. You can actually use that knife and get whatever to the edge, to the edge. So hopefully, hopefully it uh, answers to you. Uh, but for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that is a Gonzales tool. And you can see uh, it's actually a unique tool. Uh, here's a, a normal skew gouge, not the gouge, a skew chisel. And uh, it has a certain degree, okay? There's a different um, degrees uh, skews. Let me actually pull some of that and uh, uh, you will understand much better. Right here's uh, another version of a skew chisel. So you can see it's angled and that is also a skew. And uh, it has a different angle. So it's a skewed on a different angle. And if you look at the Gonzales, it has both. It has a really sharp angle and a shallow angle. Okay, so it's actually really a multi-use tool. That's why I like it, okay? So if I would have a choice to buy just uh, SKU or Gonzales, uh, the cost is the same. I would just uh, go with the Gonzales tool. Let me see if I missed anything. Rustam, с наступающим Новым годом и вас тоже. Желаю вам также здоровья. Спасибо. So Rustam has actually wished me a uh, happy new year and uh, he wished me to be healthy. But let me carve a little bit. Let me carve. Here you go, I can use that Gonzales tool right now. You can see I can get right inside of that triangle and get really, really nice cut. So I'm going to carve a little bit if it's okay with you. Amir, I hope you commented something good. I don't understand Arabic or Farsi. I don't know even if you're using Farsi or Arabic right now. Could you translate that in a Google Translate? By the way, that is one of my favorite methods to do undercut. I'm using um, number 11 uh, vayner and four millimeters uh, to get really nice and a smooth transition on inside it gives me beautiful beautiful uh, shadow and maybe i can actually use a mallet a little bit to help me
and that is how I do my really deep on the cutting. Just attack that from two sides, that's what I do. Okay, let me see. If you do have some questions, uh, go ahead, ask it. I'll try to answer it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, that was uh, uh, number five, and it was a skew. I'm sorry, not a skew, but a spoon gouge, which is a slightly bent gouge. It's not really, you know, pronounced gouge. Amir, if you dare, just let me know what do you really mean. People, are you there? Are you still watching? <laughs> so let me check if it's actually working or not. Okay, for some reason I don't see all of the uh, comments, but I can see on another computer. So Chloe is right there, and uh, there's a lot of people actually, <laughs> but, but I missed uh, lots of comments. All right. <laughs> I don't know, on one of my computers, it uh, <laughs> doesn't show. <laughs> okay. Google Translate says. Okay, hold on just a sec, let me show that. Okay, God is uh, generous and will Egypt from uh, my beloved Egypt. Wonderful, I just don't know why, uh, I mean, I kind of don't get the point of uh, this comment. I don't know what is going on, I'm missing some of the uh, comments. So it's not showing all of them. Okay, Paul is saying it works. Nate is still watching. Richard, Salso, wonderful. 
I don't know what is going on. <laughs> this computer doesn't show my <laughs> comments, all the comments. Oh, uh, uh, one of the reasons why I'm using actually uh, number 11, in this case it's a number 11 and 4 millimeters, because I really want to get the uh, undercut like a dome effect. So I don't want to get like a really sharp, you know, line on inside. So that is going to be a paint grade and I need to get inside with the brush somehow and it would be much easier for me to paint uh, when it has uh, some kind of rounded transition which is still not going to affect the look of it it's still going to cast beautiful shadow but it's going to be much easier to finish it get smaller number seven and I'll get a little cleaner gonna get uh, one of my favorite tools back bend okay let me read maybe I'm seeing something okay Shirley as I watch you I see how much force you put behind your gouges I think sometimes I'm too timid and worry about breaking them. I am seeing that I can be more forceful with my tools. Um, it is a good point. I do put some force, but not as uh, it looks probably on TV. Uh, my tool is really sharp, okay? And uh, what I'm talking about, even if I'm gonna use just the fingers, just to hold it by fingers, it's still gonna cut. Okay, so I'm not really uh, forcing too much, but sometimes, sometimes, you know, I just uh, persuade that. So, and no, you, you can't break. Of course, if the tool is sharp, you can't break. So you can break your piece first. <laughs> For example, <laughs> I just almost did it. Okay, almost broke that piece because I just placed too much force. But, um, I, when you're watching my hands, uh, you can see it's actually my hands are getting a really, what's the best way uh, to explain? I'm using muscles of my hands and sometimes my movements, they look really, really forceful, but they're not, okay? I use a lot of uh, my fingers, like a finger muscles and so on to rotate, to make a movements and so on. And, uh, but in reality, I, it's not, as forceful as it looks. By the way, don't forget to like it, and if you're new to my channel, subscribe. Not that I need that, you know, you like me or not, <laughs> so, but 
YouTube thinks differently. So if people don't like it, they're not gonna push my video to other people. But if they see a lot of likes, they will push it. But if you don't like it, just, you don't have to press it, <laughs> just go away. <laughs> Just go away. Let me see if I missed something. Let me check. And yes, I missed again a lot of uh, comments. All right. I need that to get a little bigger tool and make this part flat. Oh, by the way, I could probably show you from this position and that way I'm not going to be in the camera. Again, I'll take a spoon veiner, number 11 and 4 millimeters, and get rid of all that mess. Maybe I should do a lot more videos uh, carving only and not talking. Let me know if it's a good idea or not. Okay, let me check. gonna check uh, again what I missed uh, did any of Gibbons uh, understudies ever go on to make a name for themselves uh, uh, not not as I you know I don't think so I mean I don't know any apprentices uh, after him uh, uh, who did uh, what he's done, but I'm uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they they've been really good carvers because uh, in the case of uh, Greenland Gibbons, uh, the way it worked, uh, it was uh, he had a shop and uh, lots of apprentices, and it was uh, divided uh, on the different types of tasks. So let's say a group of uh, apprentices did just uh, roughing out. So they just uh, roughed. Uh, uh, the main form, they would call it boasting, okay? They would boast and create uh, the main form. Uh, then the second group of apprentices, uh, uh, what they did, they actually uh, worked on details and make, uh, I would say, 90% of work. 
and uh, only at the final stage, uh, Glenn Gibbons himself would put final details. So that would be like uh, three different stages of wood carving. But I don't know any uh, famous wood carvers after him in England. I, I have no doubt, I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but uh, I read multiple books about uh, Glenn Gibbons, but I, I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm gonna do <laughs> carving and uh, what uh, uh, Richard's saying and just to get the soft music on the background. But I have to be careful with music because uh, music, you know, nowadays, you know, uh, it's uh, hard to get uh, long stream music uh, and the license and so on. So uh, YouTube could just uh, take out the whole video just because of the licensing. I even, uh, I had the problem before I bought music, I bought the license and uh, I did that during one of the streams and YouTube tried to take it out and I had to prove it, just to send them license actually. And just to prove it that I, I actually did buy that. <laughs> I mean, for streaming purpose, so with the rights to stream and uh, use it for public. Let me see what I missed. Okay. Uh, Paul is asking, do you ever use a wood filler just in case, you know, if I messed up, uh, you know, on a paint crate? No, not really. I mean, I never used any wood fillers. I used actually once uh, uh, on, uh, on a school site, you'll see I was carving olive wood, uh, the box for the Bible, and the uh, I used filler uh, in some of the spots, not because what I did. Well, actually, no, actually, <laughs> I did a couple of the mistakes and I used uh, epoxy, not the filler, but epoxy. Okay, with epoxy. Let me read the next question. All right, area is saying, I like both talking and not talking alike, depends on the mood. I love hearing the sound of the would be in carved. Me too. Denise, привет. Очень приятно видеть. Uh, Danny, or Danny, Rosa. Hi, I'm a new to your channel and I love your work. I started to learn about uh, carving this year in a long time. I admire wood carving. I'm from Brazil. Bon dia. So, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, I'm getting different uh, <laughs> different comments on two different computers. Uh, I've got uh, another comment from Poland. Hello again from Poland. Talking about wood carving helps a lot, but the most important, this is a practice. Uh, when my father taught me, he gave me chisels and that's it. Okay, yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, uh, it's pretty much actually uh, my school is what is uh, all about uh, you watching me working on the live projects. I'm not just uh, uh, doing um, uh, some uh, uh, funny projects. Uh, I'm doing a real life uh, for the customers projects and uh, you watch me carving and I explain what tools I'm using and so on. So that is uh, what I do in my school site on my school site. Okay, let me see again. How come I'm getting different type of, uh, or absolutely different comments? What is going on?
Okay, let me check. John is saying, I bought four veiners under your advice. And, and what a wonderful carving tool. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, John. So, um, veiners, um, uh, it's what they used in the Renaissance era. Mostly it's what they used, veiners and gouges, pretty much. And I love uh, uh, what you can do with veiners. So it's also multi-tool, multi-sweep, I should say, tool. See how zip I get? So we're talking about uh, like at least inch and a quarter on inside, undercut. So you don't see that, but uh, it's deep. So I get really, really deep with that tool. Okay, what is going on with my comments? So I'm pretty much done um, in this section, I'm talking about the underneath of here. So all is going to take, uh, I'm going to just uh, clean up and so on, but I still have to do on that side. Let me see if it's still live. People, do you still like what you see? I mean, give me some reaction, please some uh, likes and so on doesn't matter where you're watching on YouTube or Facebook please you know what I need to get a little smaller veiner and I'll get like two millimeters veiner you know it's still veiner but uh, it's gonna be two millimeters I can actually do the whole undercutting with the veiner. Number seven, 14 millimeters, also one of my favorite tools. And what did I do with my two millimeters? see okay uh, so one of the questions are those lamps good yes I, it's actually um, <laughs> those lamps the best okay I've got two lamps and I I mean just to go on my channel uh, on um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're watching on Facebook just go on YouTube okay and uh, just uh, put my last name, uh, youtube.com forward slash Grabovetsky. 
and uh, I do have the whole video actually about those lights. Uh, the, the thing about those lights, what I like about them, okay, uh, I, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see or not, but let me actually, you know what, I'll just uh, switch the camera and I'll uh, try to show it to you. Look at this side, okay, look at that side. Uh, see the red ones? Uh, the controllers and the gray ones okay what it does it's actually changes uh, the color okay so it does change the color look what's gonna happen look what's gonna happen uh, so now I'm changing to the daylight okay and I I can work with that uh, during a day and at night I can actually change it to a yellow. I'm not sure if uh, the camera shows that or not, but right here it's a yellow color. Maybe I can actually show a little more. Well, actually not. I can't do that. <laughs> you probably don't see it, but uh, those lamps are uh, the best ones. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, okay? So they are not the cheapest ones, but they work really great. And I usually point them from two sides uh, right now they just uh, on the side but I usually do it from two sides and I can just uh, turn one just to see a shadow from one side and uh, then turn off and turn another one and see the shadows from the opposite side so they really good so uh, Richard Alex you are a wonderful wood carver and even better designer because design is important thing absolutely uh, I don't know if I'm better designer or not, but yes, I have to design all of my wood carving. I have to design actually pretty much myself. But tell me, what did I do with my number 11 and 2 millimeters? Oh, I found it. I found it right in the, in the right spot. Okay, let me see. Uh, so uh, I always had a problem with that lighting uh, but uh, again like I said uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly Wojciech uh, just to go on my YouTube channel okay just uh, look at the live streams what I've done uh, in the beginning of year and I've got uh, you'll see uh, the thumbnail okay about uh, what are the best lights and uh, matter of fact uh, I was teaching in Mark Adams school this year and uh, one of uh, the regular people who's actually taking classes all the time right there with me, uh, he already bought also those lamps and he brought that to school and he was, uh, you know, the most lighted one, I should say, because uh, he had the lights and everybody else uh, didn't. Okay, Cheryl, good to see you. Uh, I really enjoy your online school of wood carving. It is like having you there in my carving room. Great to stop, replay and start again. I'm carving. Uh, okay, those flowers, whatever you pronounce them, but I know exactly what you mean. Okay, <laughs> okay. So anyway. Thank you people, let me see uh, on another screen. Like I said, I'm missing a uh, uh, lots of comments for some reason okay Richard is saying part of my apprenticeship in Germany was uh, to just watch the master carve you can learn a lot about watching and yes I have those lights and love them the best I have ever used for the wood carving yes absolutely Bernie uh, Bernie, you are saying I never get tired of watching a master carver. Thank you very much. I don't know what is going on with my two computers today, okay? I'm getting uh, some of the comments on this one. It's the same stream and some of the comments on this one. Uh, Peter, uh, Peter Joseph Design, thanks for teaching wood carving uh, on a Twitch. Yeah, absolutely. No problem, absolutely. And again, if you're watching me on a Twitch or uh, on Facebook, I still encourage you to go to my YouTube channel, okay? On YouTube channel, it's much better. I think it's much better. You know what? I'm supposed to work in this area. I don't know why I'm uh, jumping all around. And you 
no, I can actually use one millimeter. One millimeter, and it would be the ender. And I can get really deep undercut. And I can show it to you how deep that is. It's about uh, 10 millimeters already, about uh, uh, 3 eighths of an inch undercut right there underneath. see if I missed something looks like I'm not are you still there or no I need to check my system because uh, it used to just uh, uh, those comments I pull uh, they come and then they disappear but uh, something happened actually oh i know what happened <laughs> i changed my computer because another computer i fried <laughs> it was also 2019 macbook pro 32 gigs of memory but i fried that completely because how much or how many videos i have to edit and I fried completely my RAM and uh, my GPU didn't <laughs> survive. So, and on this one is a brand new one. I didn't check the settings. Maybe it's uh, my problem. Okay, Richard. On the Twitch, Alex, what is a Russian word for best wood, lime wood? Uh, that would be lipa, okay? That would be lipa. Uh, some other countries, they call it like a tea tree because uh, you can actually drink, uh, you, you can make a really nice tea from it. Maybe someday I can actually do a live stream like almost all day long, uh, for getting more subscribers. Uh, uh, Peter, you are watching from a uh, Twitch and it's working good. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, um, uh, Twitch limits me. Uh, the stream quality okay uh, on YouTube I can stream in a full quality and with the good frame rate and also bit rate okay Twitch has a limit uh, of the bit rate so it's a little less quality on a, on a Twitch besides on a Google I have a lot more subscribers And I'm getting sometimes updates in my community tab. And you'll be able to see much, you know, a lot more information actually, I would say. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I know exactly, Cheryl, what you're saying. Yes, uh, I just don't know how to call them. <laughs> the, I know how to call them. I don't know how to pronounce them, okay, those flowers. Okay, so please forgive me, I still have my accent. 
I still have my accent and I'm kind of planning to keep it. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, you're talking about Hashemi flowers I did on school. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think uh, it's one of my favorite. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I mean, all of my projects are favorite. I love them all. Yes, I, you know, I have, I spent time with all of those projects and I know every detail, every mistake I made and so on. Okay, let me see. Uh, Peter Joseph Design is asking if I ever use uh, quarter sewn oak. Yes, I do. Uh, white quarter sewn oak. And also I use the English brown uh, quarter sewn oak. Uh, my favorite actually, uh, English from England. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, one of my favorite of the oaks. I've done some uh, red oak, but it wasn't quarter sewn or reefed cut. It was just a plain cut. But yes, I've done some quarter sewn oak and it looks beautiful. Although, uh, I would just um, tell you, just because it has flames in the grain, just because the nature of the cut, so you do have a flames uh, going all over, uh, sometimes it distracts from uh, overall movement. Uh, you do have uh, two patterns in a quarter oak, uh, quarter sewn oak. You have the grain itself, and plus those flames uh, embedded inside of the uh, uh, grain, if you know what I mean. And uh, that uh, it's not like creating a problem, but a destruction for the eye. I would say it creates little destruction for the eye. I like clean uh, wood, like uh, what I'm working right now uh, on a bass wood. I hope it answers. Okay, let me see this computer. And uh, like I said, I can read from different computers. Okay. Let me see if I missed something. Mustafa said that's uh, good. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter saying, I carve for clients 20 hours per week and learn a lot from you. Oh, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. See, I'm missing a lot, actually. I'm missing a lot. Let me... Uh, what about the quality? Is the quality still good? I mean, uh, any problems? I hope it's not. Oh, by the way, Peter, are you part of my school? Uh, are you a member of my school or not? Sorry if, um, you know, <laughs> that's not the proper question, but, uh, you know, I just got uh, too many people. I've got uh, lots of people, not too many people, of course, <laughs> more people is better, but I've got lots of people and sometimes I can't recognize all of uh, members of my school. Uh, some of you guys, yes, I do because uh, you're always active and uh, you either email me, text me and uh, active right here on YouTube. And uh, I can, you know, I know you are part of my school. Well, uh, so, I would like to become a member of your school. Just do it, okay? Do it today. If you don't like it, just cancel it. But I can tell you, most of the people actually staying with me. It's a little different school. It's not... Uh, uh, it's not the same as uh, just like a normal school. It's more like a virtual apprenticeship, pretty much. 
or are you spending time with me in a shop while I'm carving and explaining what I'm doing? Okay, it's only a few days uh, away, <laughs> 2021. Peter is saying, I have always wanted to do wood carving apprenticeship because there are no wood carving teachers uh, where I live in Pennsylvania. Um, well, you can't even find uh, uh, teachers anymore almost anywhere. Uh, doesn't matter, Pennsylvania or Florida or even in uh, Europe, modern Europe, not anymore. So it's not too many schools not too many masters left there's a lot of wood carvers but not uh, too many masters who can actually teach wood carving and uh, it's sad actually I think it's sad uh, and that's what I did uh, in my school uh, I, I yes it's called school but it's more for Google sake not for a uh, anything else as Google understands school <laughs> much better than apprenticeship but my school is more like a virtual apprenticeship and I do communicate actually with people I do communicate with people I answer my emails and uh, try to answer questions and address and so on and the school is based on the real life projects uh, for customers for clients okay well, some of the projects, I would say, because I've got few projects I did just for school, not for clients. Uh, when people asking me to do something for school, I am planning, and I, I am planning actually more um, to do for school in uh, 2021, for people could uh, carve it. And I do have a certification that once you've done some project, I actually give you a certificate of completion. Certificate of completion. Okay, let me see. Jose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He has the best school. He is the great teacher. Thank you very much, Jose. I really do appreciate that. Let me see if I missed something. Peter, that means also a lot for me. So. Of all carvers I've seen, you have best quality and skill. Thank you very much. I, I have no doubt there's lots of uh, people uh, um, who, who are able actually uh, uh, to do what I do. Uh, there's a lot of talented people. Cheryl, the format of your online school is really good and I strongly recommend it uh, to anyone interested uh, to just sign up and try it even for a month. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> try it for a year, okay? 
just <laughs> sign up for a year and if you don't like it then drop it but like i said i mean most of the people staying with me and i've got uh, a lots of people from day number one pretty much from day one when i started my school and i started only like uh, uh three and a half years ago that would be a little more right, right now it would be three years and nine months as of today and i didn't expect uh, uh you know people would be interested in that and so on but yes i mean i even had uh, some people um, uh, criticized me before i started they said eh, it's too many schools you know uh, you know there's a, a chris pie school there's a mary may school there's no place for you but uh, i just got the email a few days ago and uh, one of those guys saying uh, i mean he said um, uh, he has to apologize because he didn't expect uh, that my school would be a successful school and yes i mean it is successful school i have uh, matter in fact i have multiple people they signed for all of those uh, schools uh, he they watching chris pai they watching mary may and i know both of them actually and uh, uh, we communicate once in a while uh, with mary may more probably we communicate and teach at the same schools like Mark uh, Mark Adams School uh, and uh, in Florida in uh, uh, Tampa and so on. We teach in the same schools, uh, and uh, uh, and people in my school they signed in multiple schools and they still there. Okay, so it's not like uh, they chose one over another. Uh, everybody's different. It doesn't make it better or worse, but. Uh, you know, I can teach you my ways. Uh, Mary May can teach you a different way. And uh, Chris Pye teaches you absolutely different way. And also carving. It's different carving. Okay. A different design. Uh, different design. I try to be more uh, on classical side of wood carving. Traditional side of wood carving like uh, baroque rococo and so on although that is actually because of uh, customers okay so that's why and you are watching the live projects to tighten that okay let me see if I miss something Rodrigo hello Alexander good to see you again Merry Christmas to you and the family I will soon follow you on a Facebook also your school I have had uh, hardship lately, but soon I will I'll join. Okay, wonderful, good news. Just join, <laughs> just join. Let me see on this computer if I miss something. It looks like I missed a lot on this side, but it's okay. That is really interesting. I mean, <laughs> how is it working? I've got two computers, same stream and different set of comments which supposed to be combined some kind of flat number one but I'll do back pen number one
Peter is asking, what type of uh, wood glue do you recommend? Uh, the question is uh, really great, actually. What I use, uh, what I use, uh, tie bond, okay? But I use uh, two different types. Let me show that to you. Uh, so the n normally I use tie bond too because uh, it, 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 it's a premium glue. I don't like tie bond three because it, uh, when it dries it becomes brown, but this one has becomes yellow. And I also use uh, once in a while just a translucent uh, tie bond glue. When it dries, it's completely translucent and you don't see it. That's what I'm using. Uh, so far, I think, uh, in my opinion, maybe there's uh, some better glues, but for me, tie bond works the best. I tried different ones. I tried uh, Gorilla, I tried uh, Elmer's, uh, but I like uh, tie bond so far the best again that is only my opinion it's not necessarily yes and amen uh, it's uh, what I feel is the best by the result Elmer's is actually also not bad I mean you can get really good uh, result uh, with Elmer's glue too but for some reason I like tie bond okay, let me get my Gonzalez tool and with the Gonzalez tool, I'll get right to the edge carefully. Again, if you're new to my channel on YouTube, just subscribe, okay? Okay, hold on. Peter's saying, perfect. That's the type of wood glue I've been using. Thanks. Oh, absolutely no problem. Absolutely no problem. And I think uh, even in the 18th century, if they would have it, they would use it. They just didn't have it. All they had is just a hide glue. Well, I shouldn't say that. They had probably more than just a hide glue, but the hide glue was common for the furniture and so on. And you are. Uh, restoring furniture as I understand baroque furniture so you you know exactly what I'm talking about and the hide glue is not I mean it just doesn't hold as long it just doesn't hold as long Yeah, I'm just trying to cover my <laughs> microphone. I don't want to blow in a microphone. All right, wonderful people. Looks like there's a lot of people, but everybody's quiet.
right. Okay, wonderful people. I think uh, it is enough for the live stream today. Uh, so I I'm gonna continue to work on this piece because I have a uh, lots of stuff to do and uh, think about uh, some of the questions uh, you would like me uh, to answer and uh, comment below, okay? Or even in a in a live chat also. I'll uh, I'll check all of the comments. And if I missed something, I, I'll make sure I'll, uh, I'll try to address it in the future uh, live streams. Again, uh, let me know if you like my live streams or not. Uh, am I just wasting time or it's a good idea what I'm doing? Uh, because I, I'm busy, okay? I'm really busy and uh, uh, it takes time to set up everything and so on. If you like my live streams, let me know. If you don't like my live streams, also let me know, please. Okay, uh, just uh, don't forget before you go to like it, to like my video. Uh, is it important? Yeah, I guess it's import, uh, important, uh, not just for me, but for Google, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people who don't even know about, uh, you know, my channel. Uh, and uh, yes, I would like other people to know it. And uh, there's a lot of people who would like to see uh, my approach and it helps, I guess. I mean, your like, same like vote, makes a big difference, okay? Hopefully, makes a big difference, all right? Makes a big difference. Uh, Misrat, thank you. Celso, happy holidays to you too. Um, there's uh, some other people. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you very much, wonderful people. Okay, let me see. Okay, if I miss something. Okay, um, people of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding according to the Bible, have a wonderful rest of your day, okay? Blessings to all of you. Merry Christmas to you if you celebrate Christmas. And Hanukkah has already passed last week. But anyway, Happy Hanukkah if you celebrate Hanukkah. Happy New Year to every one of you. So maybe I'm going to see uh, some of you before uh, the New Year. But a Happy New Year, okay? Blessings uh, to you and your families, okay? Stay safe, uh, stay healthy. Uh, this year is little different uh, from uh, years before. It is challenging for a uh, lots of people. Uh, just be safe, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, blessings to you, Peter. And uh, now it is 